This is Bruce Banner. He's a scientist, a philanthropist, an all-around good guy. He just has a little anger issue. And he's not alone. A number of surveys suggest that Americans are angrier now than ever before. This is due to a variety of factors, most notably road rage, workplace pressures, and even a general irritable temperament. Now, The Incredible Hulk has been a metaphor for American rage since his creation in the Silver Age of comics. The current trend in comic book movies is to lean as much towards realism as the mythos will allow. And I think, in the case of their not-so-jolly green giant, the MCU made Bruce Banner's story arc very consistent with the real-life psychology of anger. So let's break this down. Put yourself in the position of Hulk's therapist. What's wrong with him? Yes, other than the fact that he's been exposed to gamma radiation and turns into a big green punchy man. What's going on with him emotionally? Well, he gets angry. He gets so angry that he goes to a primitive thinking rage state that he can't control. This presentation is similar to a real-world pinnacle of anger problems, IED. Um, that stands for Intermittent Explosive Disorder. The DSM-5 symptom criteria for IED are the following. Multiple verbal or behavioral outbursts of aggression in a 12-month period. The outbursts are disproportionate to the provocation. The outbursts are impulsive and not instrumental in nature. And they cause clinically significant distress and impairment in functioning. People with IED will demonstrate extreme verbal or behavioral outbursts in response to minor provocation. Studies on patients with IED show that these individuals are more likely than controls to show activation of the amygdala in response to neutral faces. The amygdala is the part of the brain that controls our fight or flight response. It's sometimes called the reptilian brain. That's because it's a much more primitive part of the human brain and it's not capable of higher order functions like reasoning. This lines up pretty well with one of the characteristics of Bruce Banner's rage state. While he's the Hulk, Bruce speaks in incomplete sentences and doesn't demonstrate his normal high level of intelligence. The third criteria is that the aggression must be impulsive and not instrumental. Instrumental aggression is aggression done with a concrete goal in mind, for example, robbing someone at gunpoint. As we saw earlier, Bruce's aggression is not instrumental. His Hulk form is instinctual and impulsive. It's not done to achieve anything. It's just a pure rage state that is triggered all on its own without Bruce's intention. This brings us to the final and probably most important criterion, that the symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment. Bruce is very distressed by the damage caused by his other form, and his job, relationships, and life are all pushed to the breaking point because he cannot control his rage state. This sadly parallels the many real-life struggles of people living with IED. According to patient interviews in this study, many people recall the instances of their episodes as if remembering the actions of another person. This type of out-of-control rage is a serious and debilitating issue for those who have it and those who are around them. Fortunately, there are treatment options available for people with this kind of disorder. And interestingly enough, many of them are pretty similar to how Bruce Banner controls the Hulk in the MCU. At the end of the first Hulk movie, Bruce Banner is shown meditating and entering into a disciplined mental lifestyle as a way of coping. Studies on IED have shown that cognitive behavioral therapy and relaxation techniques are useful in reducing the symptoms of this disorder. Cognitive therapy works like this. When something happens, your thought process is what dictates your response. If you can identify what thoughts lead to the results that you don't like, you can change those thoughts and get different results. Research suggests that this disciplined mental reconditioning is particularly well suited for logical minds that can think in the abstract, like Bruce Banner's. Deep breathing and mindfulness meditation techniques have been shown to lower activity in the amygdala in response to stressors making the explosive episodes associated with IED less likely. Research also recommends exposure therapy. 
this simply refers to being around an irritating stimulus so the subject can practice using the coping mechanisms. After a little bit of trial and error, the subject can reduce the number of episodes and live a productive life. So that's all well and good, but the question remains, can all this therapy keep Banner from turning into the Hulk? Well, I think that this question is a little misguided because of what I mentioned earlier as the most important criteria for a disorder, that the symptoms cause clinically significant impairment and distress. In my previous video, I discussed how ADHD could have at one point in our past been adaptive, but in modern school systems, it's now seen as an impairment. Most psychological diagnoses are relative to a person's context. Getting so mad that you want to fight people at your job is a functional impairment. Unless, fighting people is your job. There are some professions where an explosive adrenaline rush can help the subject be more effective than before. In reflecting on his career, former boxer Mike Tyson attributes much of his early success to his trainer Customato's ability to get Mike to control his emotions and channel his anger productively. He also attributes much of his later personal and professional deterioration to losing that discipline. So, since part of Bruce Banner's professional goals are making bad guy pancakes, the goal of his therapy wouldn't be to eliminate the Hulk, but to help him control when the Hulk emerges so that his anger does not interfere with his functioning. This psychological realism is one of the reasons I really like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Despite being a world of magic and super serums, the MCU portrays characters that are living with very real issues. From Loki's wounded narcissism, to Tony Stark channeling his childhood inferiority complex into heroic endeavors as an adult. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, I could probably do a whole series on the MCU. Let me know in the comments if there's a Marvel character you want to see analyzed in future videos. And don't forget to subscribe for more pop culture psychoanalysis. Thanks for watching.